I had the privilege of studying at this medical school, it's a small Christian medical school, and they would they have this concept that every doctor should be well trained in healing the mind, the body, and the spirit. And the way they do the spiritual part is that they will bring in a, a, an inspirational speaker, a pastor, once a semester. And you would go attend these weekly meetings. And once they brought in this South, South American preacher, and he told this fascinating story. The story is told about this young mess living in South Mexico. She was married to this gentleman that was the brother of a drug lord. His brother was the drug kingpin. And the way it works is that he controls the whole territory, wherever that is, however wide that is, and nothing happens without his knowing. And they have connections all over the world. And her husband would beat her within inches of her life. Very often her face would be swollen, bruised, and she would be crying and no one to help her. He would come home drunk, kick her. I mean, I mean really horrible um, 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 treatment. At what point she got shot up, bones broken. Her situation was really, really desperate. And my question is, are you in a similar situation where your life is meeting a dead end? You're homeless? Coming out of war, war torn situation? Been to war, suffering from PTSD? Homeless? Addicted to drugs? Going in rehab um, and rehab and a rehab and a rehab? And just, just in a cycle where the alcohol is always dominating your life, you can't get away from it. You've lost your job. You've, you've lost your family. You've lost your home. And things are looking really, really bad. Whatever it is, the situation you're in, are you looking for something better? Let me read this story to you that I find really, really fascinating. The story is in Matthew 8, 22 to 24. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. Matthew, reading Matthew 8, verses 22 to 24. And he said to them, so Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. So here's the situation where Jesus told them, you know, he was exhausted. Let's cross over. Let's get away from the crowd. Let's get over to the other side of the lake. And as soon as he got in, he was fast asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, reading verse 23. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Now, these guys were fishermen, expert fishermen. They've been in storms before. But this one was different. There was more water coming in, and they couldn't bail it out. They couldn't change the sails enough to get out of the situation. They're doing every trick they can. And they were afraid the boat was sinking. So they went to Jesus. He was fast asleep in the storm. And as he slept, they went over to him and they said, Master, Master, we are perishing. Now your life might be like that, that there's a storm around you and you, you don't know what to do. Like Martha, there is no way out. If you try to run, you get in trouble. Her husband told her that if you should leave, doesn't matter where you are throughout the world, I have contacts, I will find you. 
And when I find you, I will kill you. If you are in such a desperate situation, listen to the next verse. And then he arose and rebuked the wind. So Jesus got up. He actually spoke harshly to the wind. Okay? He arose and rebuked the wind and the raging water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Friends, living on planet Earth, you get into some storms you just can't control. And if Jesus is in your life, in your boat, close enough to you that you can reach out to him and touch him and ask him for help, he told this story. This story was recorded so that you know to live your best life yet. You can always reach out to Jesus and he will step into the boat with you. He wants to ride with you. He wants to go through life with you. He wants to show that with him, he can help you. It's a very, very simple process like that. They reached out and they touched Jesus. That act of touching, that's prayer. When you reach out to Jesus, what you're doing, you're touching him. And he responds by getting up, and he calms the storms around you. That's how it works. Now, you might have never had an experience where you reach out to God in the most desperate situation, and he delivered. I've been there a million times, and I've learned by practice, by habit, by routine, just to reach out to him. And he answers every step of the way. Well, um, Martha somehow got into a situation where she studied, studied her husband's routine. And she noticed that he would get drunk somewhere around four, four, between 4 o'clock and 10, 10, 4, 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. He would be fast asleep. And somehow she made an arrangement to get an early flight. And she flew out from South Mexico, I guess she went to um, the city, wherever the capital is, District of Federal, DF. And from there she flew to LA, escaping with nothing on her back and her two little children. In LA, she had a cousin, a primo. And there she started a new life. He took care of her, he cared for her. And this cousin was a Christian, and he invited her to this program that they were having every night. And the pastor told this very same story, that it doesn't matter where you are, what's your situation, God can turn it around. He can make it completely different. He can form a solution. And as a matter of fact, even before you call him, he answers you. And if you're here out of a situation that was dangerous, it's because he has been working on your behalf. And that pastor made what is called an altar call. He said to him, For those of you who would like to turn your life over to Jesus. Those of you who want to be, to believe in him. And you read Mark 16 and verse 16, he says, 
He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. He told the story how Jesus gave his life to die in your stead. So it doesn't matter what happened or how chaotic your life has been. It doesn't matter how, much, how many crimes you have committed or how horrible you've been to the people around you. Whether you have been victimized, raped, doesn't matter what it is, he can lift you up. And he told the story about how Jesus himself went and as, a, as an example, he followed what it needs to be to be baptized. And it shows that here Jesus said, um, it's in um, Matthew 9, verses 23. It says here that for Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized. So Jesus modeled it. So Jesus came, went down to the river Jordan, and he did everything possible to follow an example that we can follow. So what Jesus did, he came, went in to the water, walked towards John, and he said to John, I must be baptized. So let me find that text one more time. It's, it's, it's um, here, um, Matthew 3, verses 13 and 14. And Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized as an example for us. John, recognizing his sinfulness, knowing who Jesus was, said, no, 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 I can't baptize you. John tried to prevent him. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 14. Jesus saying, I need to be baptized by you. Is that what John was saying? You are the coming, you are coming to me to be baptized. I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus is saying, no, I must be baptized by you, John. And there John went, took Jesus, put him under the water, and brought him back up as a symbol that you die to this world. You die to self. You die to the old world, the world that Jesus cleansed you from, all the crime, the drugs, the everything that is unchristian, unchristlike, all the evil that you have committed. It's a symbol that Jesus went as an example. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 3 and verse 13. And Jesus came to Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him as an example. So, friends, what is this thing about baptism? It's a situation where you can, um, Matthew 16 and verse 16, you believe that Jesus can help you. You turn your life over to him, and then you become baptized, just as the, Jesus did. Again, Mark 16 and verse 16 says, He who believes it and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. So, the way God does it, it's like a marriage. I grew up in the British system. And when you find this beautiful girl and you want a relationship with him, you put a ring on. With Jesus, you get baptized. It's a public acknowledgement that you are now married to Jesus. You have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
you believe in him and you become baptized. It's as simple as that. Yes, I took that road, walked into a church, walked into the baptism vestry, put on the water, and was baptized. The preacher went and he outlined all of this. And while he was making this appeal, talking about baptism, Martha got up and walked to the front of the church, deciding to be baptized. And as she stood there, she felt a hand on her. It was her husband. Immediately she got paled and almost fainted. What she didn't know, that her husband traced her as he had promised. And he started knowing that she was going to this every night, trying to figure out what's the best way to reach to her. And he would slip into these meetings and he was listening. And he heard where Jesus said, Though your sins be as scarlet, though they be like red like crimson, he can make it white as snow. Doesn't matter how bad you've been, by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, asking for forgiveness, he can clean your slate and you can start over just like a baby. And her husband, when Martha walked to the front, her husband also marked, walked to the front. And when he touched her, the look on her face, he realized that she was thinking that he was going to hurt her. And he said to her, I'm here to give my heart to Jesus. And she put her hand down, and he slipped his hand in hers. And they both accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. They actually got baptized together. Twenty years later, they're still married, happily with happy children. Friends, that's the process. It's about being all in, totally committed, becoming baptized, following the example of Jesus. Baptism, the biblical way, where you get immersed like Jesus, not sprinkled on as a baby, but all in, all in for Jesus. There is no storm so violent in your life that he can't calm. I've had many storms. But I've reached out to Jesus, and he's answered me. So friends, I appeal to you, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Ask him for forgiveness, and he can clean the slate. He will quiet the storm in your surrounding, your life, and he will give you a miraculous end. He's done it for people like me, out of severe poverty, brokenness, to put me ahead of the game, a professor of medicine, a multi-awarded, financially secure, because I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. I just want to let you know that this is possible. Accept Jesus Christ and become baptized. We're waiting to hear from you. So you have fallen in love with Jesus. You've been touched by him. And you've decided to become baptized. Reach out to us. There's a contact button here. There's a website you can reach out to us. There's a phone number you can call us your best life yet. We want to link you with, with someone. We want to connect you to a church where someone kind, courteous, compassionate can come by and just walk with you 
You can find a church that will receive you. And most importantly, if you're somewhere where there is no church, Jesus is there with you. Find a Bible. Study it. The programs that we have, and there's a way in which you can study the Bible online, virtually. You can get to know Jesus. Find somewhere where you can become baptized. And even if you cannot become, become baptized, you can accept Jesus in your, as your Savior because soon He's coming back. Thank you for walking with us going through this program. Father in heaven, thank you for the decisions we made today to accept you as a Savior to become baptized. As I reach out in excitement because of the decision, we pray that this decision will be sealed in heaven and throughout eternity you will partner with us. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for helping us from now on to live our best life yet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to invite you to come back tomorrow. Dr. Carlton Bird will be doing our final um, celebration. Tomorrow night will be our final um, program for ending the 40 days. So if you've been with us, come back tomorrow night. You will hear one of the most life-changing um, talks, lectures, sermons, whatever you want to call it that you've, that you've ever heard. I promise you, you will not regret it. I'll see you tomorrow.